What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Miles, here from The Casual Athlete. Today, what I'm going to be taking you through is five young players that I think have really enhanced their careers over the course of this Rugby League World Cup. And what a start to the Rugby League World Cup we've had. Uh, we're into week three now, and the competition's only heating up, and I can't wait for the finals and semis. It's going to be an absolute blast. So keep watching. Uh, if you want any more Rugby League content, we're definitely looking to uh, help out and, and give you guys the stuff that you need. So leave a like in the comments or, uh, or make a suggestion on videos that you'd like to see. But for now, let's get into our video, starting with Sua Wong. So Sua Wong is a Fijian international. He's only 19 years old and signed with the Roosters when he was 14. Now, the bloke is an absolute beast, uh, plays second row, and, you know, he started for Fiji in all of their World Cup games so far, and he's thoroughly impressed me. Um, you know, consistently runs over 100 metres, makes his tackles, and, and runs a good line. Um, there's no uh, real kind of way to, to describe what he can be, but what I'd like to see is him get you know, a bit more first grade experience or even reserve grade experience. He's only played 10 games for the North Sydney Bears and he's just 19. So um, I think moving into 2023 for Sua Wong, um, he'd probably be looking to build on the career that he kind of started in reserve grade last year and potentially push for, you know, that, uh, that starting spot in the Roosters side. When you've got guys like uh, Angus Crichton and Satili Tupanua coming back from injury. They also plugged Nat Butcher into there um, for a long period of last year. So I think Wong, what he provides is that young ex exuberance. You know, he's a live wire out on the field. You, you don't really um, know what he's going to do in terms of, uh, you know, from an experience standpoint, but I think that's an advantage for, for Sir Wong. Um you know, having grown up through the Roosters, you know, junior system, they train their players very well and they're very good at poaching young players from uh, other clubs and, and, and other uh, junior systems. So they've signed this guy for a reason. There's no real limits to the talent that he brings. And Gus Gould has got uh, pretty big reps on this kid. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do. Next up on our list is Isaiah Katoa. Now, this guy is actually the youngest on my list here uh, of five. He's only 18 years old. Like, he's an outstanding player. And I think, you know, what, what was highlighted from Isaiah's potential that we saw in SG Ball this year, he obviously kicked the winning field goal in, in, their, uh, in their win against the Knights. And, you know, a lot of people saw that. And because it was such a long game, it went for over 90 minutes and uh, the you know, the play was outstanding from both teams. Isaiah's just signed a three-year deal with the Dolphins. And what I'd like to see with Isaiah, I think he might get that six jersey or seven jersey. It'll depend on, you know, whether Milford or you know, one, they want to go with a combination of Milford, maybe Cody Nicarima is also there. So he could, you know, potentially slot into the halves as well. But I just think this kid's an absolute gun. Uh, there's no real way to describe it. He's got... Excellent footwork, great decision making, and he, you know, has a kick in him as well, which is unheard of for a, you know, young eighteen-year-old half. I think it might be a bit early to give him the reins. They might need to blood him a little bit in reserve grade uh, and things like that. But uh, you know, I'm thoroughly looking forward to seeing what he can produce out on the field. And uh, you know, he's just he's just an exciting prospect. You know, if you're thinking about you know a couple of late round picks for your super coach side and. You know, the Dolphins are sitting there and they don't really know what their halves situation is potentially going to be. Isaiah Cattell is not a bad shout. Not a bad shout. So uh, keep your eyes peeled on this bloke. He's, uh, he's going to be an absolute weapon for years to come, I think. Next man up is Sunia Taruva. So for Taruva, the interesting thing is he did get his NRL debut this year and, and thoroughly impressed. And... Uh, for me, it's really interesting just because of the departure of Charlie Staines uh, as to what that means for 
Taruva. He's uh, an exciting prospect in either the fullback or wing position. I think he's a little small to be playing centre, so he'll slot in at either fullback or wing, depending on if there's injuries to Brian Toto and Taylor May. I think you can't keep those two out of the side after what they did last year. But you know, Taruva's coming off the back of a you know, thoroughly good performance against Scotland very recently uh, where he broke seven tackles and ran for over 200 metres. So, you know, Taruva's uh, very uh, exciting in terms of, you know, what he can provide, uh, you know, young Fijian talent. He's only 20, so he's got a long way to go in his career. And I think um, if he continues to work on his fullback skills and, and the ball playing aspect of playing fullback, there's no limit to uh, what he can produce. So I'll uh, I'll be thoroughly looking out for uh, for what he's uh, going to be doing this year, and you know he might be one of those guys who's going to be on the waiver wire. But if there's an injury that goes down, I'd definitely pick him up, especially with the you know strength of that param- that Penrith side. So moving on, we've got my boy, my new town Jet boy, uh, Kale Iro. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed watching Kale Iro down at Henson Park this year. I even went to uh, North Sydney when they played the Bears as well. So, you know, having uh, Iro in, in this game here as well, he was playing second row uh, in this game and, uh, you know, just beats a couple of would-be defenders there and, and streaks all the way for a brilliant try. Um, and, you know, he was a big part of why the Newtown Jets were so successful this year. He was the New South Wales Cup Player of the Year. And you don't get that without being pretty decent at your job. And uh, he was thoroughly rewarded with a you know, start for the uh, Cronulla Sharks as well. So I think with Iro, he's 22 and, you know, he's at that age where I think he's been at a couple of clubs. He, you know, had a under 20s contract with the Warriors. He signed with the Knights for a little bit as well and um, has come to the Shire. And what I like about, the Sharks is if you look at their current first grade side, they have a lot of guys who are very successful for the Newtown Jets a couple of years ago in the grand final team that uh, won New South Wales Cup. So you got guys like Will Kennedy, uh, Teague Wilton, you know, Toby Rudolph. Uh, These guys uh, are thoroughly important to the development and, um, and strength of the club at its junior and reserve grade levels. And, you know, with Iro, he's such an exciting prospect. He's a pretty big, big boy at you know ninety four kilos, six foot two. So uh, I'd be pretty scared to be facing up against him every week on the either the wing or um, centre. But he's for the Cook Islands in this World Cup. He's been playing at fullback as well, and you know we saw Will Kennedy go down with a few injuries this year, but they've got such a great plethora of options at fullback and. You know, guys like Lockie Miller slotted in there. They've got, you know, Kay Dykes, I know, has just re-signed as well. So, um, you know, keeping those guys on the roster um, and who are even playing at the lower levels in reserve grade, uh, having those guys in your setup is going to be crucial. And we, we saw it play out this year for the Sharks when Kennedy went down. So, you know, Iro there is just another option. It's tough to see where he's going to fit in because – with Katoa coming back and Ronaldo Militalo being an absolute weapon this year. And, you know, Ramian and Talakai were so good in the centers. I don't think you can really push them out. So, you know, other clubs might come sniffing around his dad and his uncle used to play for the Manly Sea Eagles. And, uh, you know, they need a bit of help I'd say at the moment. So, you know, if he wanted to go there, I'm sure they'd find a spot for him. But um, yeah, Iro has just been outstanding in this world cup. He, consistently runs for over 100 and 150 meters it's uh it's a sight to see and breaks tackles for fun i just love the way the guy plays he's got speed he's got strength and um i think he'll be a first grade player that's for sure in 2023 the last one up on my list um he kind of broke out earlier this year and jacob Caraz is just such an exciting guy for me to talk about because he wasn't initially part of the dog's plans for this season. Uh, when you look at, you know, the first you know five, six rounds, he didn't get much of a go and then, you know, came in, absolutely killed it. And then they shipped him out again, um, which I thought was absolutely odd because his debut, you could just tell that this guy is a full-blown first grader. 
And it, like, it's not even a, it's not even a discussion that we need to have. So I'm so interested to see where Karaz's career can go because right now for Lebanon, he's playing at fullback, um, you know, backing up Mitchell Moses, Adam Dwayne and the like. So, and he's absolutely killing it. And with the dogs, when you look at them moving forward, do we know a hundred percent who their fullback's going to be? I'm not sure. So sure that we do. Uh, Jake Avarillo did a pretty good job towards the end of last year, but I wouldn't say he locked it down that number one spot, but Karaz is a guy who can play, you know, wing center or or fullback. I'd happily throw him into any of those positions, but um, yeah, I find it so interesting because as a North Queensland Cowboys fan, we had him, we had him signed up for three years and in 2020 uh, when the Queensland cup competition got canceled because of COVID um, he had to move back to Sydney and we released him uh, to go do that. Um, But I would have loved to keep him uh, up at uh, North Queensland because he's just an absolute ecstatic talent. And you, you could tell from a young age, I mean, when he came in to that Lebanon side at the 2019 nines world cup, he was 17 at the time and unfortunately, you know, got disqualified because of it. But the guy just wants to play footy. And if that didn't tell you that he was willing to, you know, try and bend the rules to do what he could for his country and, you know, just go out there and, you know, try and do the best he could for them. And, you know, we saw it earlier this year with his tackle breaking ability. He's fantastic in the air and makes good decisions and eat, what I like about Karaz, and it's a common theme with a lot of young players that come into the um, come into the game, like Joe Suwali, um, they back themselves and they're not going to, you know, let the, I guess the, you know, the momentum or the, the occasion get to them. And Karaz, you know, showed great mental fortitude to be able to go out there on debut and just, you know, say i don't care who these players are i don't care if they're older bigger stronger than me i'm going to go out there and give it everything i've got and that's the kind of attitude that really helped the dogs you know kind of find form towards the end of the season and next year i'm really hoping that the dogs you know pull for a top eight spot because i think a lot of pundits maybe had it a little too early with guys like reed marnie and you know kick out coming in i think that the dogs can make it work and, and really make a, a go of it next year. And uh, Karaz should be a big part of that. But anyway, guys, that's my five. Uh, I know there's a lot of guys at this World Cup that have done really well. You know, Jack Wellsby, uh, Dom Young, to, just to name a few, and Joe, Joe Suwali. But I, I just thought that these guys potentially um, have the most uh, upside and haven't really broken out as yet. Um, so... If you like this video, leave a like in the comments um, and, you know, subscribe to our channel, guys. We're trying to do a lot more content now and and really looking for those suggestions. Uh, we're trying to come up with stuff every week for you guys. But uh, until then, stay tuned.